Welcome to the Quarterly Book Club. My name is Samantha. Uh, in a little bit, joining me again is going to be Ashley and Alana. They were here with me for Point Law. Um, that was quarter one of this year. So right now, quarter three, we just finished reading You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott. Um, I think this is a book that we did all enjoy. Uh, I will tell you that there is a bit of a trigger warning. Um, there's a lot of sexual... Uh, talk uh, in this book and some really dark themes dealing with murder and and a little Oedipus complex uh, theming going on. So just trigger warning about that. If that kind of stuff really upsets you, you might want to skip this episode because we do talk about it. Um, yeah, So, but if you read the book, you're probably familiar with those topics already. Uh, this one might not be for you if that's something that really, um, really hit, you know, it hits hard for you. On a later note, uh, you are going to hear one of my dogs upstairs in one of the bedrooms. <laughs> she's being a little dramatic tonight, and she's crying and barking a bit. Um, she wants to be down here to say hello to everyone. She uh, kind of she's very social and has a hard time not being with people. So um, poor thing is just she's she's a little whiny tonight. So if you hear something, it is my dog Shira. Uh, crying a bit so it's just something that we're we're gonna deal with we're on our beautiful green couch again i uh, can't wait to get into this book with these lovely ladies and we'll talk to you soon So we are back again with the wonderful Ashley and wonderful Alana. I am Sam, Quarterly Book Club. What book did we read this quarter? Since you, you went through it so me. quickly. <laughs> you will know me. By Miss Megan, Megan Abbott. Abbott. Mm. So, first impressions. All right. So I actually, this was a very quick read for me as well. And at first I was like, I don't know if this is going to be for me, but... Then I breeze through it, and it's like, okay, I'm going to keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. There's a point where it's like, this is, eh. And then it immediately hooked me back in. So, yeah. First impressions? I got through it in a week, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, we agreed to do this, and like a week later, I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, she messaged me and was yeah. just like, hey, um, I, I finished this book already. I'm like, oh, jeez, I, I hadn't started yet, and I was finishing up two other books. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I should get on this one. So um, I was mostly the holdup, not because, it, but just because I hadn't started it yet. But, um, but now I, I'm legit yeah. concerned that I don't remember everything. Well, once we start talking, it'll come it'll back. Come back like, yeah. I did that too. I finished. I finished a book. I can't remember which one it was, but like the first week, and then we had two and a half months to wait, and I was like. I should read this again. And, I, and then I, I didn't. Too. Yeah. It did not happen. No. No. I'm like, oh, well. Oh, well, we'll just talk about it and see what happens. Yeah. See what What's comes. the main character's see what brings, name? Who's brings the main forward. Character? Katie, Katie Devin. Katie ha. Devin. <laughs> yes. So, good check. We got that down. Yes. Okay, did anyone else think the little brother was creepy? No. I thought he was just, like, the second sibling who was, like, my big sister's a big star, so maybe I'm a little weird and want attention, but I didn't think he was creepy. I think it might be, because I, I told Ashley this a little earlier, is that um, I had to switch to audio. Not because I didn't enjoy the book, but it, I'm just in, like, a period where I just am having trouble sitting down and focusing mm -hmm. on a book while reading it. And, you know, it comes it ebbs and flows. You know, mm -hmm. you have your times when you're just not, not, don't have the patience to sit down and read. And so I, I switched to audio, and it the narrator was fantastic, but it might be her reading of the kid that made it sound creepy to me. So. Yeah, he just seemed neglected to me. Just yes. Like, and poor little kid. I know. I felt, I felt so him. bad. I'm like, this poor child. Mm -hmm. And then he had scarlet fever. And there was like, who gets scarlet fever? I, I did. I got scarlet fever when I was two. What? Yeah. Seriously? Okay. Yeah. I like that they, the little, was it little woman <laughs> reference? She's like, oh, the only other mm -hmm. person I've ever heard of getting scarlet yeah. fever is a fictional character from like the 1800s. Yeah. It's like something like during the Civil <laughs> War, like, I think. Yeah. I know I'm that I was like, book. no. I'm like, I had scarlet fever. I don't remember this, of course, because okay. I was two, but. 
Well, I had scarlet fever. And then all the parents thought that they were lying about it. I am so why like, would you lie? Why about? would you lie about scarlet fever? I mean, like, that's like of seems, everything you're, you can lie about, like any sickness like you can say. The say flu. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like. That's not one you're just going to pull out at random. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to say you have scarlet fever unless they have scarlet right. fever. I had a, a coworker who had um, hoof, and, hoof and mouth. Is hoof and mouth disease. Yeah, hoof yeah. and mouth, and he was out of work for a while, and we were like, who the hell gets that? He doesn't have kids. He doesn't. So, I mean, who, and then we all were like, oh, okay, so it can happen. Mm-hmm. You just get it, you know, so it's yeah. just. It was just a weird thing because it's either flu at work, it's either flu mm-hmm. or a cold or something like that. But to be like, oh, he's not here because he's got hoof and mouth disease. And we're like, mm-hmm. huh? Same, same lines yeah. of scarlet fever. Is like, yeah. why would you lie about that? It's yeah. too obscure. Yeah. Poor sweet. I felt bad for Drew. I was just like, uh, wait, Drew's the Drew, brother. Yeah, yeah, Drew's the brother. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting, yeah. So... Yeah, well, some points when I was reading, it's like, all right, kid's probably having nightmares. Yeah, his sister does have, like, creepy feet for just being a, a gymnast. And then also uh-huh. the, like, removable toe, not removable. <laughs> <laughs> just the toes that are gone. Yeah. So I can see how he could be creepy, especially when he's, like, describing his dreams that mm-hmm. aren't actually dreams sometimes. Yeah. His dreams are yep. weird and creepy. Yeah. I felt bad for him, too, there, because, like, anything that, like, he said, like, any of these dreams, his parents just immediately dismissed yeah. anything yeah. that he said. I'm just like, why don't you sit down and listen to what your child is saying? And... And he was a what, lot of six? It probably, yeah, he was something like that. I'm like, well, or I was think it sixth grade? He was, no, it he, sixth. I think he was going into fourth grade. Okay, like, like in he was young. current times. Yeah, like he was old enough yeah. to do science fair and progress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So um, old enough to do all the things and just start like understanding things yeah. of the world. So mm-hmm. yeah, and, and an analytical child and yeah mm-hmm. yeah but you're right the parents are just like they're very no, quick to shut mind. him down I'm just like no you're dreaming he's just like no he's like I saw Devin driving the car and they're just like oh you were dreaming I'm just like mm. that very could be something that happened it's not like just like oh Devin flew off the roof I'm like that was obviously a dream mm-hmm. yes. or, unless you know Devin unless she was sneaking out of yeah. the house yeah true which she's, is extremely yeah. possible and probable yeah. like but then she's climbing out a window she's not flying off the roof mm. and I'm like I feel like he's old enough to know the difference between flying off the roof and he's climbing sleep, out of a window out. that's yeah. also possible mm-hmm. too but I'm like flying off the roof probably a dream driving a car that's possible that's yes. something teenagers <laughs> do like yeah. they just sneak out and take their parents cars mm-hmm. and but not my precious baby no. she would no. never do anything no Devin oh. never oh. I didn't like Devin <laughs> I didn't either I, I was trying to like her. I know. I was just, really trying, but I was like... They just made such a big deal out of her. I'm just like, is she really that great? See, I <laughs> did not dislike the. I did not dislike them. I disliked mm-hmm. the parents. It was mm-hmm. just like that whole culture was so mm-hmm. toxic. Yeah. And oh, yeah, for like, sure. She, like, when, I, when they were like, oh, she, they put her in gymnastics because she's missing toes. And so it was like, oh, it'll help with her balance. And mm-hmm. it just right. had me something that she latched on to. Mm-hmm. It was really good. I was like, okay, that's good. And so I didn't dislike her. I was like, she's very focused, like hyper focused, which mm-hmm. is kind of like, ooh, not not like dislike, but like kind of scary, but I respect it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, you, you have a goal. You think you can do it. You know you can do it. You're going to do it. You go, girl. Yeah. But Oh, I didn't have ooh. a logical reason to dislike her. I just didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was it, for me. It was more the you kind of knew she was lying about something, and I was oh, like, yeah. a teenager. I was yeah. like, just <laughs> ugh, just tell your parents what's happening. Mm-hmm. Like I was just getting kind of um, like, like just go. you know, let's this could all be over a lot sooner if you just fessed up. But you know, it's yeah. a book, it's a story, so yeah. you wouldn't have a story without it. So, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I sports and some like give kids great confidence and teamwork mm-hmm. and team building. But yeah, right, that's it was a very toxic environment. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was a, is more of like a solo it's sport too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's because they're all competing against each other. Yep. Like even though they're all like on, on the a same team, team, yeah, it's. They're doing this for themselves. I and to say the, yeah. the phrase, a rising tide raises all ships, is what they use in the book. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's an, an individual sport. But, like... But yeah. still a team, and yeah. you still got to support each other. Mm-hmm. Like, I was um, I was a, an elite athlete growing up as well, um, although I was never treated like that. <laughs> and um, my parents were never the... My parents, like, my mom was super supportive, but my, they were never the, uh, 
the obsessive ones. Yeah. They they always made sure that I, I was balanced emotionally mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, this is the only thing that you have and you're, this is the only thing you're good at. I always tried different things, so I was always very balanced. So that's important. And poor Devin doesn't have any balance. It's yeah. this is it. This is your goal. And we want it probably more than you do. I feel like I came more from her dad than her mom because her mom yeah. was just kind of like, well, this is what we've been working for, so I guess we're going to keep doing this, and I'm going to neglect my younger child because this is what we've been working for. But, like, I kind of feel like if at some point Devin actually had gone to Katie and said just, like, I don't want to do this anymore, Katie's re reaction would have been something along the lines of just, like, have you really thought about this? Yeah. Is this really what you want to do? Like, we've taken out, like, what, 20 mortgages on our house? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. That you really don't want to do it? Okay, you really, really, really don't want to do it? Because once we're done, yeah, we're not we're coming done. back yeah. to it. Yeah. So I feel like Katie would have been more understanding, but just like she just latched onto her dad, and her dad's the one who's pushing for this. And yeah, and he became a booster mm -hmm. and oh, yeah, raised all this money. Yeah. And well, like, honestly, mm -hmm. the whole reason why he's in the relationship is because of Devin still. Like, mm -hmm. Katie basically admits that he, she, uh, but anchor babied him. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, he's going to put all of his time and energy into this child. And also there's like guilt because he thinks it's his fault that she's missing toes. Mm -hmm. So he's like, there's so much compensation on dad's part yeah. to mm -hmm. make sure that works. What was his so. name? Eric? Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was Eric. I was like, I want to say Mike, but that is not correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was something Eric. short. Yeah. So. Well, Devin losing the toes mm -hmm. on um, by sliding under the under the lawnmower, the lawnmower yeah. reminded me of something that I saw many years ago, and every now and then it flashes in my head because mm -hmm. I was I, it freaks me out, and I was like, nah. and to read it here, I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was um, I watched one of those like it was it was in the days before YouTube was big, so uh -huh. it was like in nineties. It was one of those just a almost like funniest home videos, but like for mm -hmm. terrible things. I, don't, I couldn't say what show it was. It, it was probably just on the news. But this little kid was running out to his dad who was on a riding mower. Oh, no. And he slid underneath yeah. the thing. And um, he didn't lose anything, but his shoe got torn up and thrown out the other side. Oh. So that always freaked me out. Mm -hmm. um, it's because they didn't have the, they didn't have the, the hood down. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't have, so he was just run, ran, he slid and went right underneath it. And I was just like, That's ah! Not, no. So that made me think of that, and yeah. I was like, no. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's a horrible thing, and I, mm -hmm. poor dad. Can you yeah. imagine? Yeah. Oh, I've just figured my child. Like, that's not All funny, them, but yeah. it's. <laughs> my question is, like, because the neighbor mentions that, like, he, so, yeah, you're just standing in the screen door, and she's like, no, I wasn't. I was watching from the window, and it's like, wait, what actually happened? Yeah. I didn't, one of the things I feel like the author could have, like, filled in a little more. I understand she wanted it to be ambiguous, but I needed just a little more. Because I'm still not quite sure. Was like, did she... Like, where was Katie yeah. when it happened? Yeah. yeah. Well, early on in the book, and this is something that kind of intrigued me, and I was like, why? Why? And I still think about it. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Yeah. Uh, um, it was uh, in the very beginning, Eric had said something along the lines of, um, or Katie was remembering they were having a conversation or something like that, and they were like, well, I remember, like, what we did. What we did. And it was very dramatic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so... And my brain starts reeling. So I was thinking, okay, Devin didn't just lose a f her toes. Like, mm -hmm. did their kid die and they adopted another one to replace her? <laughs> I mean, I was thinking way outside the box. And I was like... Because they, they got really dramatic and, like, the you know, what, what we did. I'm like, what did you do? What did you do? <laughs> did you steal toes from someone? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But, um, so I feel like that for me kind of never got answered or it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to yeah. be. Well, I so. think it kind of answered itself later when the gym was closed and Katie's there and like all the girls are just like around. She's just watching them and how like stunted they are and she's mm -hmm. like this is what we do to them i think that's yeah. like what that's they're that's a good about. point yeah so. okay i did not think of that that's mm -hmm. i think you're probably 100 percent correct mm -hmm. so <laughs> but yeah they they mentioned that a lot the coach <laughs> the coach to me was really funny um because again i listened to it on audio mm -hmm. and the narrator gave him this voice and it <laughs> uh a lot of times in why i typically don't like ya mm -hmm. is they don't speak like teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I felt like the teenagers spoke more like teenagers. Mm -hmm. The adults didn't 
really, to me, speak, speak like, like adults. Because yeah. the, the coach, to me, was very nash, eh? You know, like, he seemed like a 20s bad guy. I think that's the versus, narrator. Like, who was right. <laughs> like, I didn't get that vibe from, just from his description, where he's like, yeah, he seems like typical, like, coach. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, he's got like these the, phrases that yeah. I'm like, no one says that. Yes, I've, I did. never, oh my gosh, I've like, never heard that in my so life. Nice, like, this is very coach like and yeah it's get over it's the top so it's so funny oh, it's, yeah it's great yeah the coach cracked me up I mean <laughs> I can only imagine with like the crazy nah see yeah. <laughs> like, like I've got a stogie Shane you're gonna be a star kid ah there's no such thing as pain everything's beautiful and effort, effortless yeah. whatever the phrase yeah. is yeah. <laughs> no it uh, he seemed like a good guy but just also like <laughs> super misguided and yeah. just like Wanting the best, and he seemed like he was doing yeah. a good job. Part was in the like, right place, yeah. but mm-hmm. execution was not great. You know, but things like, yeah, it just that whole situation is mm-hmm. weird. As far as the adults, I feel like most of them had pretty good individual voices. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you could tell who was, like, well, obviously it says who's speaking, but <laughs> the way they speak and such, and especially the tone shifts. Yeah. Like Gwen mm-hmm. is my favorite character. Oh, my God, I love <laughs> Gwen. Her <laughs> and... Um, was it Molly, the, the baton twirler? Yeah. She's so neurotic, and it comes across so well. And I'm like, I know this mother. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's funny. So you, you have children. I do. Do they do any um, sports or athletics? or? They do, but nothing that they've stuck with. Um, my son did baseball one summer, and he didn't want to do it the next summer. He did soccer. My daughter did ballet and tap, which we talked about when we did Point Claw over here. And she did do gymnastics as well. And she loved all of it while she was doing it. But then once, like, the class wrapped up, she was like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And so then she did soccer over the summer, too. And now they're all they're done. They don't want to do anything else. So I asked them. I'm just like, well, I'm like, is there anything? I'm like, you can't just do nothing. Like, right. I'm like, during the school year, you have school, and they're young. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you don't have to do anything there. But summer, you can't just stay at home all the time. Like, what do you want to do? And my daughter... She's five. She goes, I want to do bowling. Oh, <laughs> so, they have children's bowling leagues. Do they? I think that's they adorable. Do. She's yeah. never been bowling before. I don't know how she knows what bowling is. She she watches she's a lot of YouTube, watch so she's so so I'm sure she's picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I said to Sam, my boyfriend Sam, not this. I'm like, all right. I guess we're <laughs> taking the kids bowling at some point. <laughs> and I think my son wants to learn to play the trumpet. Oh, fun. So fun. I'm just like, yeah. all right. I'm like, that's something. I'm like, we'll look into that. <laughs> but the yeah. trumpet, mambo I number know. five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad our brains went this way. Yep. And the trumpets. Okay. Now, do you have children? I, I don't I know. I have no kids. Okay. Yikes. I do not either. No kids. Do you? Yeah. Oh, no. It's, I love children. It is not I for everyone. <laughs> no, it's, I feel like I get a reputation of like not liking children. I'm like, I love kids. I love working with kids. Don't have any personally. It's just something I you feel like like I feel like. kids oh, yeah. and not like, want yep. them? Or I know. am my yeah. child right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've no. I've just got the dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very you know, and they do agility and they do training. So yeah. <laughs> they do sports. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's um, I was a a coach. I was a martial arts instructor. I was a swim t- swim teacher, um, um, camp counselor. So I've worked with kids a lot, mm-hmm. and uh, I've had crazy parents, not to that level, because mm-hmm. I wasn't teaching elite stuff. I was teaching Mm a lot, you know, I did a lot of beginner Mm -hmm. work. Um, when I was working with teenagers, then it's more, Mm -hmm. you know, so, so I was, when I was a cheerleading coach, you know, I, I I always taught the little, little ones because that's, it's it's super fun and it's, it's so cute to, to see them. And and then we got to come up with the dance routine. It's always like wiggle the butt. So, and then they they have a blast doing it. So it's like, but, um, that's one thing Jenna said she wanted to do too, was she wanted to be a cheerleader. Yes. And (laughs) Sam was just like, no. Yes. I'm like, if she yeah, brings it up there again. Is nothing wrong yeah, with yeah. being a cheerleader. It's very athletic and competitive. Mm-hmm. No, his and thing is he just didn't like a lot of the cheerleaders he went to school with. Like, they well, were not good people. And he's like, and it all started because they were cheerleaders at a young yeah. age. I'm like, I don't think I one has anything with the other. But. The case. <laughs> I mean, those are, those are really old stereotypes. Mm-hmm. And, um... It's... I mean, it it's not untrue in all schools. But right. it's the same thing as, like... What, it, it, the small group of people ruins it for the rest of yeah. them, like crazy parents. Um, if you guys hear anything weird, it is my dogs upstairs. Uh, the younger one does not like being separated from us, so she's kind of destroying the guest bedroom right now. Um, so if you hear anything weird, 
my poor baby is just not happy right now. The older one's probably asleep in the in the in the office, but the other one's not too happy. So can well, she hear can hear us now. So yeah, she, she like, knows there are people here. Yeah. She, she's a fifty-five pound baby Huey snuggle bug, so she wants to be right here, yeah. um, and she wants to say hello. So that's Aww. what you're hearing. So don't worry, they're not being abused. I promise. <laughs> and no one's being held hostage. No. Not today. <laughs> All right. You might not see these two again. <laughs> just kidding. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> instead of the book cover, it just says, help in the sleeve. <laughs> help me. If only I thought about that ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Well, in our ball gown. Yes. <laughs> It'll be on my fan. No, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about in a few months. <laughs> 2020, 1920. Oh, here we no. go. Darling. <laughs> but back to yeah. you yeah. know me. I never had crazy, super crazy parents mm. come to me with anything weird, so or, or like really aggressive yeah. parents. So I was very thankful to not have that experience. But yeah, cheerleaders like we we weren't the popular kids when I was a cheerleader in school, and I started cheerleading in middle school, and you know went all the way up, and did, did, I was did competitive cheerleading. Um, but it was our it was our flag squad. That was a bunch of the divas. Of course. And I was just like, okay, I don't care this much. But no, cheerleading is great, and it was a lot of fun, and I loved coaching it. Anyway, did you do any sports or anything growing up? I did sports. I was, like, not a very – I did competitive cheerleading, not Mm -hmm. for very long, but just pretty much because I wanted to. Yeah. Placed third and stuff, so. Yeah, so I – did my foray mostly dance and mm-hmm. I played soccer, basketball, volleyball, um, ran track. Field, so awesome! So you did a lot of stuff. I used to do um, the discus actually. Oh, yeah. cool! So I've tried. I was terrible at it. <laughs> People didn't expect me to throw it as far. And I was like, "Yep, I'm the smallest girl out there." I'm just like, I just beat everyone. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah, um, it's a good. Thing. So I've been around like it's kind of like very dance mommy. I was also. Mm-hmm too tall to do anything gymnastics wise so I'm a very early age so yeah just shot straight up and they were like uneven bars not quite so much for you (laughs) well like you can hope these girls have been training what Devin's between since she was like three three? Three? yeah yeah so they have a pretty good gauge of like oh you're gonna be too tall (laughs) I did like tumblers like Mm -hmm. when I was at eight but nothing like this and I yeah. really wanted to because, like, was it Dominique Dawes? And we were like, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was just like. The, what was it the Magnificent <gasps> Seven from 1990? Or like six to. Something like that. Yeah, the mid Yeah, Dominique da- Dawes, um, Dominique Muciano, uh, Miller, shoot, what's her first name? Something Miller. Nastia Lukin, some stuff like that. So I remember all those yeah. people. Watch them every, you know, coming up when I was young. Um and did you do any sports or anything? I did not. Like, I was <laughs> not interested in sports. I've always been the drama kid. Like, I always just wanted to do theater stuff, and I did choir and those things. She's a drama kid, yeah. too. You can yeah. hear her. I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was always choir and theater. Like, I didn't do any sort of sports things. I wanted to do dance, but it never happened. And then, um, I think I mentioned this last time, Sam, boyfriend Sam, and I have taken some ballroom dancing lessons. Fun. And it, it is a lot of fun. But, um... So I'm like, I finally did get my dance lessons. I was just an adult when it happened. <laughs> but, and that's part of the reasons why I'm just like, Jenna, go do dance. Go do gymnastics because yeah. those were things I always wanted to do and I never got to. Yeah, I think it's important for mm-hmm. to just try. Try different things. Mm-hmm. See what takes. See what you like. See what mm-hmm. you don't. Um, when I got into martial arts at, at, a, at a young age, because my brother was being picked on, and to send him in the class, they sent me with him because mm-hmm. I was the older sibling and... You know, to give him a little bit of confidence, they sent me with him. And I really wasn't interested in it until we, you have three free introductory classes mm-hmm. where the, in the studio I grew up in. And someone threw me over their hip, and they were teaching us how to land. And I was just like, oh, I love this. I quit everything else, and I was full force into that. And it was just, it was so, I mean, that cheerleading dance, um, I played softball. Um, you know, I, I swam, but not competitively. I did diving, but I wasn't great at it. And I was just like, meh, I don't want to spend time doing that anyway. Um, I wrestled. I played football when I was younger. Um, but, yeah, just, I, we didn't have a lot of dance mommy people. That It was like the, the martial arts instructors, was like a big group of dads. And um, they, they didn't 
let that kind of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. So I feel kind of protected from these kinds of people. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's a balance with everything. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, being a little dance mommy. Oh, yeah. But not an insane person. Yeah, like everyone's obsessed with this one person and including, like, the one person who owns the entire town, which happens to be a woman, which I'm just like, yes, you yes. go, girl. You mm-hmm. run everything. <laughs> you smooth talk everyone. Mm-hmm. She's you like, pay off everyone. You smooth criminal you. So. This is a musical episode today. Yeah, she's like, well, you need my checkbook. And I was like, yes. Get some. Gwen's amazing. Yes. And I'm just like, I love her. I love her. She's I love her. She's also kind yeah. of a terrible mom. <laughs> oh, like, she straight up left her child at home in her giant house without, like, it, like I guess the trainer is there. And it's like, oh, I'm home alone, this tiny little girl. It's like, she's like, oh, my mom's out with Devin. Yeah. yeah. Training Devin. Yeah. Didn't take me with them. Just left Then that's here. so sad. I know. Oh, she's like, a terrible mother. little girl. Yeah, but also, her daughter has, like, a would-be boyfriend with sideburns. Yeah. Like, what? Like, isn't this girl like, you know, nine? Yeah, she's eleven. And I was she's like, young. Do you, how do you what do you how do you know what a boyfriend is? Yeah. Like but oh, all the kids are knowing things at younger ages now. Yeah. Yeah. And plus like gymnasts are also tiny, but like mm-hmm. not saying this guy is okay, but I'm like she prop he's probably like, yeah, that girl's probably 15, which yeah. is still not okay. Right. Yeah. And then Probably thought just, she was older than 11. But. Yeah. But the fact that he told her to come back when she was in high school is even more like, what? What? It's like, you know that you'll be older then, too. Yeah. <laughs> and also, speaking of, like, sketchy relationships. Yeah. The heart of the matter. Yeah. <laughs> the crux of the, of all the drama. We haven't even talked about. Not, yeah. yep. Yeah. So let's Ryan. dive into some relationship yeah. issues. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, just one, everyone's obsessed with this, like, young man, which I handsome guess... Handsome young get, guy. Handsome guy, he's good with his hand, he's nice to look at, he's pretty, he's helpful, and I guess in this, like, hyper-competitive <laughs> feminine world where, like, all of these young women are, like, kind of stripped of their femininity, like, are even, like, afraid of it, mm-hmm. it's like, this guy's, like, this golden boy trophy for, like, not only, like, the little, the teenage girls, but the moms. The mothers, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just, Little little lust bug right over yeah. there. <laughs> like, you know, everyone needs some eye candy. Cool, mm. fine, whatever. I, I for sure thought Katie was going to be the one banging it. <laughs> I, I was like, Katie's totally having an affair with that guy. And then it all came out later, and I was like, I was so wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, Katie seemed too passive. I'm yeah. just like, there's, I'm like, everyone thinks that. I'm just like, she's totally not. Like, the idea, like, literally never crossed her mind. Yeah. Like, she's like, oh, he's so handsome. He's so pretty. And then... They're just like, oh, well, are you sleeping with him? What? <laughs> like, <sighs> never went beyond. Just like, oh, he's a very attractive young man. Like, yeah. she, Katie had no spine, really. The only <laughs> thing that really, like, got me at the very beginning was, like, was it Coach Teddy who, like, kissed her on the lips? Like, smacked up? Someone gets, like, straight up kissed on the mouth at mm-hmm. this it was at the, it was party. at the party, yeah. yeah. Which, that's where I thought this was going. It's like, oh, this is really expensive. Like, what wouldn't she do for her very elite daughter? Yeah. Sleep with the coach who she doesn't have to pay for classes. And that never happened because, again, Katie is too passive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She is very, very timid. Yes. Wanna, Eric, on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> very aggressive. Hey, GG. Yes. Yes. Be, be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Be Sorry. Be. And yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah um, and... Spending all the time with like the other moms, and it was really shady. And then, um, like young, young, handsome man Ryan comes along, um, different one from our producer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you know, Ryan comes along and is just you know dating the other, dating the tumbling coach, which is Teddy's niece. What was it, Haley? Haley. Haley. Um, you know, a lot of weird things happening. Uh, you know, with her purple car, did she? You know, because Ryan died. Spoiler. Oh, yeah. Spoiler. Oh, they they uh, mentioned that, like, in, like, before <laughs> chapter one yeah. starts. There's, like, that little section about the party. There was, like, oh, Ryan dies. Yep. Don't so. get attached. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so. obsess about him too much. Like, everyone else <laughs> mm-hmm. in the book. So. Right. Yeah. So, um... Obsess over someone real, maybe? No, no real actually. in the book? <laughs> not, no, this is definitely a nonfiction. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, I wouldn't be step-by-step step account. Ugh. 
I mean, this stuff happens, yeah, though. It's yeah. Murder people, happens. People are nuts. Teenage murder happens. <laughs> whole show about that like snap where women kill yep mm-hmm. or some um, of them been teenagers mm-hmm. or uh what is it um ah oh, so i married like i married an ex murderer <laughs> <laughs> the, the one where the the guy lies about who he is and the woman marries him and then then she realizes who she actually who he actually is and it's just like mm-hmm. who did i marry something like that um that's i mean that's this on um, the detective channel is or the id, ID channel Mm, the detective like channel is yeah. really in, insane. So it's a fun station, though. Um, true crime podcasts. You know, you, we hear about it everywhere. Right. Uh, so um, then you got uh, Haley's per- little purple car. Mm-hmm. You know, had no dents in it. There was no proof that she that she hit him. Um, but everyone immediately thought it was her. And you know, because it's always it's always the girlfriend. It's always the boyfriend. It's always the husband. It's always the wife. So. I don't and, know. Like once they said that, like he had dropped her off like she did not go seek him out to run him off no, the road. no I didn't think way. so either like honestly as soon as like that first false account and they're like ah oh, it was a woman it's like Devin probably did it and then like I put it in the back of my mind so all this other crazy stuff happened and then I was like maybe her dad did it because it had that quote about Oedipus at the, um, so the book is divided into parts and each <laughs> begins with a quote from like usually a gymnastics mm-hmm, memoir mm-hmm. or something but there's one from Oedipus Rex I think yeah, and I was like, oh, is this going to be an edible thing? Wouldn't be surprised, but which yes. it kind of goes there, but not it, to yeah. the extent yeah. Yeah. I was anticipating. Yep. Thank it, God. Whew. Like little gender swap Oedipus yeah. going on, and I was like, I, I was a little afraid they were going in that direction, too. Not not afraid, but I was like, whoa, Man. that's brave. <laughs> so, um, which would have been very interesting to read either way, but the, the I, I thought that Megan Abbott did a great job with the miss directs and yeah. like the leading you in different way different directions mm-hmm. and I don't feel that she she did it just to do it you know like she, it served the story and it came full mm-hmm. circle even if you know some things maybe maybe you wanted a little more here a little more there but it still all came and all your questions your big questions were answered right. um which we didn't which we haven't seen in all of the books we have mm-hmm. read so um but especially in a young adult book because I typically don't like young adult I liked this one a lot. I felt this was more for, like, teenage. Yeah. Like, almost adult, young adults. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was saying, I was like, this is a YA book. I'm like, it's like the main character is Katie. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it all, like, everything is from her point of yep. view. So I'm just like, like, I was surprised. I'm just like, this is a YA? Are we sure this is a YA? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was... Not just general fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's got to be the, a little bit of that older yeah. older YA demographic. Mm-hmm. You know, like you were saying, teens and yeah. you know, maybe early 20s and stuff. Because yeah. um, it's you know, dealing with, with sex for the first time and, mm-hmm. you know, oh, no and one, no one said they're de- experienced sex as well, too. Mm-hmm. The parents do it in this book. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Huh. There is a lot of that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, but. With the misdirects, though, one, I am not super, like, I'm not sure I feel about it. Like, I don't hate it. I don't love it is, like, towards the end where Katie's being an awful mom with, Poor sick Drew. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's doing all this, like, bizarre stuff. I'm like, all right, so is Katie actually a reliable narrator? Like, I was like, is she kind of losing it? Or has she lost it? Did When did she lose it? Like, has she just been gone this entire time? Does she of, have scarlet fever and yeah, it's messing yeah. with her mind? You exactly. don't know. Yeah. Well, like, between the, st- I was standing, you were standing the door. And she was like, I wasn't standing the door. We have no reason not to believe neighbor, dude. Mm-hmm. And then, like, her, oh, gosh. Well, I can understand her not, like, remembering things that happened at the party. Mm-hmm. When she's, like, looking at the picture, it's like, oh, 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 this is, oh, I was being a little flirty. <laughs> yeah. So, and um, there's just other things, which some of it was just, like, general, like, bear mom stuff. Like, when mm-hmm. the other mom calls her up and is being obnoxious, and she's just basically like, hey, maybe if your daughter weren't mediocre, you would understand. I was, well, like, I was like, like, sick, yes. burn, burn. <laughs> Her tone just completely changed <laughs> because she's so, like... Uh, easy going like yeah I'll do these crazy things for my daughter and this team the entire book and then she's mm-hmm. just like I've no. had it yep. <laughs> I am done well it's, it's always nice when someone passive finds their voice mm-hmm. and you're yeah. just like yes get him get him you don't have to put Sick up that yeah. no and she does yeah but then she goes back to being passive again and it was a little disappointing well it was kind of like more true I was kind of yeah. okay with that because yeah. not everyone even like as a 
naturally inherited timid, inherit mm-hmm. timid person. I know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not fierce all the time because that's yeah. exhausting. But like, mm-hmm. it was good to like for me. It was like maybe she isn't losing it completely. Yeah. So um, yeah. No, oh, she's gaining it. Yeah, she's yeah. gaining it. She's and gaining it. Maintaining it. it yeah. And not burning herself out because things have gone haywire. And all yep. this, like, most of this book takes place in, like, a week. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very short, short time. Because, yeah. like, and I had to check that, too, because at one point I'm just like, wait, how? Like, I'd flip back. I'm just like, how long <laughs> did you do this? the same like, thing. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, this whole thing happens. Like, it is only in, like, a week or mm-hmm. two weeks or something. Like, it's a very short time frame. Mm-hmm. But, like, the way it's all laid out, it seems like this is stretching out over, like, months. But, well, mm-hmm. the first yeah. part, the party happened, like, way. Yeah, way earlier, Which is, like, what yeah. established, like. Yeah. This whole weird misdirective romance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and everything in between the party to mm-hmm. to what's happening Very, now, yeah. you know, was was the money raising and the booster stuff and the mm-hmm. construction in in, in the uh, gym. Yeah. So you have all of that that happened here, but what's happening right now? Because the 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 tape, the police tape was still mm-hmm. up. Yeah. You know, there there's still pieces of the silver. Mm-hmm. There's still silver paint chips um, in places. And you you know like. That's still there, so you know that's a that tight timeline. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, and everything came out really quickly. Um, but yeah, this. What did you guys think about the signed leotard with the stains on it still, and also ripped? Uh, <sighs> it was weird. <laughs> awkward silence I brought to you by. <laughs> so at one point. Katie, the main mom, goes to Dead Man's house and with his mom there, while her sick child is like <clears throat> watching TV in the living or wherever in the apartment. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she brought this poor kid with yeah, scarlet fever with her. His child around. Well, yeah. he should just be in bed, laying, yeah, sleeping. Chill just out, lady, like take care of your kid. That kid, obvi- big child, obviously can take care of herself. <laughs> <laughs> She's already driving. Okay, you just right. don't know it yeah. yet. So, yeah. So what happens is. Dead man's mom is in the apartment and shows, like, the um, Katie, her daughter's torn gymnastics leotard, which are expensive, like, very expensive, Yeah, they're by saying, the like, way. at minimum $90 yeah. a leotard. And this and is, this like, is a special thing like, with, like, sewn on, like, the... Bedazzled. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is, like, competition leotard. Yeah. Like so probably it's probably a $200 And they paid extra to yeah. have all that done, they so, said. Those rhinestones. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, all right, so a very expensive leotard, torn... I assume in the crotch area with stains on the back. They said it was white. They didn't say what it was, but we can use our imagination. And Katie freaks out, which I think we all readers all freaked out at that moment. A little bit, yeah. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Brian's mom, she's like, because Katie's freaking out, and she's like, nope, nope. Flips it inside, look, or tells her to look inside the leotard or something mm-hmm. like that. And it's signed with Devin. I can't remember what it said, but it was like... It has, like, X's and O's uh, or yeah, some crap or something like that. I'm like, like, so I was just, like, very confused personally. It's, like, we have the flashback to the initial scene where we find out why that, like, lay is crumpled. And I was, like, mm-hmm. and I think that was, was that the leotard she's wearing that night? I don't um, remember. I, I mean, I think it's implied that that's yeah. the, okay. that's the one. Yeah. yeah, so I just couldn't remember. It was, like, because in the flashbacks, they don't give you a complete timeline of that night. Mm-hmm. I know everyone's getting twisted, but <laughs> jeez. And we also all read this a, li- a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. And we just weren't able to record until now, but you know, so we're like, oh, details, 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 details. Well, like, so, the whole crush working thing yeah. that kind of like hewed me into it's like, why is this young man bringing this grown woman's uh, daughter's teenage daughter's crushed lay? Like, why is it crushed? Because it's a lay made of orchids, which happen to be very pricey Mm -hmm. and smell very good and very delicate. So why is it crushed? Why was it behind the dumpster? Like, I don't know. I was kind of, like, very Mm -hmm. suspicious from the Mm get-go of Ryan. Yeah, I thought it was going to go a different direction with Ryan. I was like, oh, okay. So Mm -hmm. she was cool with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, she was like trying something out. I feel like Devin as like one of those people who cause she's very type A. Like mm-hmm. when they're describing mm-hmm, yes. her room, it's like meticulous. Everything's labeled. It's clean. Has its place. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have like all of this gymnastic stuff you would expect from a teenage girl mm-hmm. who's really into something. It's like mm-hmm. one posters thing. Yeah. and you know. clean. 
And it's like, she's kind of a, might be kind of a psychopath, but she, which is proven because she runs the old yeah. dude off the road. Not off the road. No. Just runs into him. Yeah. Yeah. Devin kills Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It was an accident. It, it was, was, an accident. was too dark. <laughs> it, was, it was too wasn't. dark at night. It was too dark <laughs> and he was potentially <laughs> ruining wasn't. her future by exposing their relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't want to go public. So she, he loved well, her he so much. Well, he was like 22 much. and she was like 15. I think yeah. she was, wasn't he a little older than that? I don't think so. He may have been 25. I want to say like 25. But was Haley 22 then? I think Haley was 22. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, she, like, oh, poor baby. She's trying to get out. <laughs> Sensing our distress on this yeah. scene. <laughs> Let this me come comfort okay. you. But yeah, Haley and Ryan were in their 20s, and Devin was like 15, 16. 15, 16 yeah. Or probably 15 when they yeah, started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Statutory um, rape. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, should we have caution more in this? I don't know. <laughs> I'll do that in my intro. Yeah. Okay. Warnings. Um, Trigger warnings for this one. Murder. Um, Statutory rape. Biological inappropriate rape. relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Little Oedipus complex yeah. going on. Yeah. Even yeah. going back to, not Mike, but Eric. <laughs> <laughs> His, like, obsession, his drive, I'm like, honestly, I can see it, like, from, like, that standpoint where it's like, yeah, this is my life now that I was kind of, like, forced into, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make the most of it, or because it's probably their meal ticket, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, put everything into, like, their, what, second mortgage, he's working this mm -hmm. job that he likes and is pretty good at, and mm -hmm. has, like, other contract, which I, it's like, sound dudes, do dude. I don't know. Something didn't line up quite there, but he's also, like, a smooth talker. Yeah. So, you know. I forgot my point with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But, you know, he's, like, there's so many really intense characters. There's Devin, Eric, Gwen. I feel like there's another really intense person. Haley. Haley. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Just a tad. Haley. Just a little bit. I loved Haley. Um, yeah, no, I did no, not dislike was, her at all. She was crazy but yeah. I was like oh I loved her I loved her so much <laughs> cops show up 13 year runaway what took you so long yeah oh jeez <laughs> wow yeah Haley being the the niece of Teddy the coach yeah the coach the gym. Yeah. um her parents were having a hard time dealing with her. She's a troubled, troubled youth, and you know she did gymnastics, right? But was she not. Did. It she was got nothing to be, like she's too tall. She was too yeah. tall and too um, developed. Yeah. So she, she became a comment about that. So she became a, a tumbling coach, mm -hmm. um, and the kids loved her. She did a great job, mm -hmm. and the parents enjoyed her. Um, and, and she was living with Teddy. And they were the ones raising her from then on. So he felt, you know, some responsibility. Uh, for her and, and well of course he's been raising her right. but just the, um, that relationship seemed pretty sweet to yeah. me I like you know it was a very very nice thing yeah. to do for for a relative and um, then when she ends up attacking Devin and poor Teddy is just devastated mm -hmm. over it and just emotionally a wreck and I I felt bad for I him and then him yeah then he had to talk to he asked Katie to come over and was like, can we please talk? And she's like, and, oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. And her Katie passive Katie way. Brings her yeah. kid or, or has yeah. her neighbor watch her kid mm -hmm. as she leaves him. Again. <laughs> With scarlet fever. Again. <laughs> this poor child. Mm -hmm. Him and his, his sea monkeys. He yeah. just wants I to know, do it. He, he just was. wants to do a science experiment. <laughs> he wanted to win the science fair. That's, that's all like he his wanted. Thing. Mm -hmm. And he was too sick to go. He's an extremely intelligent child. Mm -hmm. And he's he just, just trying to get his parents just like, okay, well, can you just, because, like, even if he couldn't enter, he's like, can you just do this so I know what happens and they mm -hmm. couldn't be bothered? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, well, he uh, tried to tell them that, that Devin ruined his first experiment because mm -hmm. she, she slammed it on the ground, right? It was the mm -hmm. sea monkeys with the motor oil. And so she, mm -hmm. she, so he had to start all over. Mm -hmm. And the parents, again, it goes back to dismissing him. They just dismissed him. There's it was no like, oh, didn't that, that didn't happen. No, no Devin well, would never do that. Yeah. Yeah. Devin straight up killed a man. Yeah. <laughs> she would. Yeah, what are sea monkeys? <laughs> Nothing. You were under my heel. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh. Drew's probably my favorite character, too. Yeah. She's like, Drew was oh. great. 
so patient. The the narrator gave gave him a lisp, so he kind of talked like this in the book, Aww. and it was just really cute. it was cute. But like I said, like the the narrator did a great job, but some of her intonations because she did have like slight variations for every mm-hmm. character, so it was really nice to listen to. But she just made the kids sound a little creepy. So to me, I'm just like these kids are so creepy. <laughs> like uh, Gwen's daughter, the eleven year old Lacey. Lacey. Lacey yeah. Was weird. Oh yeah. my gosh! Thank you. Like, that no, kid Lacey is was creepy. totally weird. <laughs> Well, she's like, how see, was it the Aryan youth blonde hair? I won't yeah. they describe it. So I'm just like, oh my god. That was Hitler youth, yeah. yeah. And like the narrator had her talking like this. Well that's how I imagine she would like, talk. Yeah. There you go. Very just yeah. soft too and just a little vacant, maybe? Yeah, she yeah. Knows she's exactly what she's talking about. You know, she's like one of those like ooh, spooky child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even like the way that like Abbott describes her like later on in the book. It was like, what is she? Oh, her little sex doll face. And I was just like, yeah. Yeah. you didn't realize you're talking about an 11-year-old? Yeah. But are you implying that's, like, what she's going to do with her? <laughs> Which, but, I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely an undertone of, of sexualizing youth and maybe fetishizing a little bit, yeah. you know, when it comes to gymnasts or, you know, like, because yeah. there's, there's muscle fetishes, there's, you know, there's all mm-hmm. sorts of stuff. So I'm like, maybe there's a little fetishizing going on yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, or she's trying to bring that to light. It's like, hey, guess what? This, not okay to do that. Yeah, because so. they keep mentioning a lot. There's like, oh, well, we have to, like, get these trained on, like, with Devin before she changes. Yeah. And then when they ho- reveal the whole, like, she slept with Ryan thing and Katie gives her the tampons, and then she checks them later. She's like, oh, she still hasn't gotten her period. Like, she's only used that one tampon. And mm-hmm. so, like, it is very much that they are showing that, like, these are teenagers, but they look like children. And yeah. it's... Mm-hmm. It, it, it is creepy. I don't think it, yeah. like, other than, like, oh, yeah, my daughter has not had her here, but she's had sex. But then I think it really clicks for Katie. Mm-hmm. After seeing all of them there, not in their element, waiting for mm-hmm. the back, um, gym to open. And then when she goes to Katie's, or not Katie's, Devin's school and sees her with other teenagers. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. like, how infantile she looks compared mm-hmm. to them. And then, like, how, how brutal. Teen- yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, how teenage boys talk to her. I'm like, wow, you're being sexually harassed and invalidated at the same time. It's, and I was like, That's it was rough. nasty. I had Ooh. that I, I had a, a reaction to to read to reading that and I was just like, oh <laughs> I, would, no. I would have not reacted well to the, to that. I give Devin credit for dealing with that. Yes. Every very day. much so. Which is why I'm like, I can't hate her because she's I'm like, That's a strong character. <laughs> Jesus. Like, that is true. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, poor guy. And that's a, that's the fun thing about talking through books with yeah. people is that you can change perspectives on yeah. something because you pick up on things that I don't, you pick up things that I don't, vice versa. And it's like, oh yeah, that that's a good point. Okay, uh-huh. and and your opinions can shift. Um, I wish people could talk like this about other topics, yeah. but you know, um, I wonder what kind of topics those <laughs> might be. Let's all think. Do, 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 do. <laughs> but you know, you can have that discussion and your perspective shifts a little like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because yeah, Devin does hide a lot of things, but again, mm-hmm. she is a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, I still, she's, I mean, she's not my favorite character, but I think you're absolutely right. She is, she is definitely a lot stronger than we give her yeah. credit for in the beginning. Um, but then she straight up killed a dude. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of onion. She's an onion. There's a lot of layers there. I mean, I feel like you have to be pretty <laughs> mentally strong to straight up kill a dude and not unravel immediately. Oh, it's right. Your thing. Well, she right. is kind of like messing up at the gym, but I'm like, it's not just she killed a dude. The coach isn't there. Her, her, their coach is like trying to kill her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she her, and Haley have it out. Oh, yeah. She straight and she up kicks Haley's ass. Bites too. this woman on her, she was it under, she like, bit her, her face her and then like ripped yeah. out and then a, ripped chunk, out of a chunk of her hair. Of her hair. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. I was, yeah, I feel like, like Haley mm-hmm. should have known better. I'm like, you've trained with this girl yeah. for a lot of her life, and you know how strong and what it takes to do all yeah. that stuff. I'm like, yeah. don't pick pipes with that Lee gymnast. Yeah. <laughs> like, Haley was not in her right mind either, though. Like, no. she was She's grieving. Yeah. Yeah, she, she got dumped, and her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, yeah. died. Yeah. yeah. And she knew. That's a rough day. She yeah. knew about Ryan yeah. and Devin, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... And to her credit, she didn't tell anyone who would listen. Like, yeah. she kept that pretty much to herself. Mm. But, 
I love Haley, though. As crazy as she was, I love Haley. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I liked Haley, too. I, mm-hmm. I felt... I felt bad for her being there. Um, But it it was kind of, like, nice that she had relatives to go to and a place to go to. And um, so she had stability. Mm -hmm. So so it wasn't just that she was a troubled youth. She, sure, she had some troubles, Mm -hmm. but she's been working through them. And so you know that she's a strong character. So to have someone who's overcome so much already Mm -hmm. be broken down Mm -hmm. by a 15-year-old and Mm -hmm. her boyfriend... Um, like they, they put that poor girl through the ringer I with know, that, they did. you know, and just, and, and the worst part about it is that Ryan left her cause he's in love with this child, child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. but she, Devin did not love him back at mm-hmm. all. No, not she, nope, did not have those feelings at all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, that's the worst part is, like, this person doesn't even care about you, but I do. But, I mean, that's not a reason to stay together. Even, but right. for Haley, mm-hmm. in Haley's mind, it's got to be, like, she doesn't even love you. Yeah. And that's just she replaying. She doesn't obsess about you like I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't even think she really loved him. It's like, oh, there's a stable person that's, like, approved by my family and it's really close to home. And, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. a matter of the convenience. And, like, an age bracket that is yeah. accessible. And, mm-hmm. yeah. So... I don't know. Also, like, Ryan is, like, a lot of a scumbag. Um, <laughs> like, through and through, I do not like Ryan. I don't, I don't care how good-looking people think he is. Mm-hmm. Think, you think the how many... Yeah, words. <laughs> um, so, like, the fact that he took her to a pretty nice restaurant mm-hmm. in the nicest booth to break up with her so she wouldn't have cause a scene was, like, really stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you guys had been... They have been dating for a while and, like, were obviously rubby, lovey-dovey and, like, had makeup breakup type things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what do you expect? Like, you didn't even, like, allow her to change clothes. Mm-hmm. But she was there in her sweatpants. Mm-hmm. I'd be super upset if, like, oh, yeah. my significant other took me to a fancy place. Generally. I'd have to break mm-hmm. up. Well, I'd be pissed if he broke up with me. <laughs> like, <laughs> whoa. But, like. Just this, she might kill, straight up kill a dude. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> slow, slow tortures. <laughs> um, I'm a kill him with kindness type. <laughs> depends on the situation, too. But, well. No, that's like, true. Like, yeah. Dragged her out in public in her sweats at this nice place. And you got her all like, oh, we're going to get engaged. And dumps. Mm-hmm her for a 15 year old oh, who wasn't sh- even into him yeah yeah. Gosh. yeah it wasn't even considering like this child's future i'm like i'm in love with you i'm gonna let's tell everyone like you do realize she's you're gonna a, go straight to jail yeah straight to jail nationally like goals for international like dominance yeah it's gonna be a scandal yeah, from yeah. the beginning she's and she'll have a rough way to go if mm-hmm. he did come out if he lived and did come out with that yeah. information mm-hmm. and then even if she was okay with them, like, you're ruining this girl's life. Yeah. Like, well, her career path that she's been working on her entire life. So yeah. not being dramatic when saying ruining her life. Yeah. Because, <laughs> so. I mean, Olympic goals are, are yeah. not easy. And it's that it, it takes a lot of focus. And Devin was focused. That's what she, she wanted. She knew was, she knew yeah. what she wanted and knew, you know. I mean, even when it came to sex, she knew she wanted to try it. To try it. Yeah. She knew she wanted to have sex. It was never a big deal to her. Mm-hmm. Her parents probably, you know, because like, like you said, her parents have a lot of sex in this one. And, mm-hmm. you know, so it was probably something that was pretty open in the in the household. Like, mm-hmm. you know, this mm-hmm. is what people do. And she, Devin's also seen everyone be flirty with Ryan. So it's like, what is this all about? Why is this guy so special? Yeah. Well, here's a man I can try having sex with him. And yeah. We'll see how this goes. All right, well, that was a thing. And yeah. Goodbye. Nice to, yeah. <laughs> nice to know. Yeah. Also, boys her age are dunderheads and super mean to her. Yeah. Yes. So, like, this is the only guy who's That's probably nice, like, to nice to her. Yeah. 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 So I think she mentions guys, boys don't look at her or something. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and Katie's like, oh, no, yeah. they are. They do look at you. And mm-hmm. like, then we find out later, just like, no, they would they, do more than looking, Katie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are torturing her. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so we've got themes of, like, bullying and, you know, all, all, a lot of layers in this one. Mm-hmm. I thought she did a good job weaving through. Mm-hmm. Um, if this was maybe not labeled in a young adult section, mm-hmm. it probably could have gotten a lot deeper. Yeah. Um, and it probably may be a bit more grittier. I would like to see or read or I would like to see maybe a more gritty version oh, yeah, of this and sure. get a little more deeper into yes. those emotions because I feel like the author definitely has she's got some chops I like the way she writes mm-hmm. she's very fluid it's very easy to get through obviously because we all like just stampeded right through <laughs> this, this book mm-hmm. um, but something like even grittier would, would be 
just take it to like that next level. Yeah, that's just like a little more. Yeah, I like, like darkness and grit. Good. That's just kind of. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty dark. Gritty, it is, yeah. Y-A. yeah. Like even the fact I'm like they're just they're not just having sex. They're describing the different kinds of sex. And mm-hmm. It's like you're talking about like I don't know. This is <clears throat> adult woman talking about like this grown man's like like different passions. I was like, there are children reading this book, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a well, line ish, but yeah. I don't know. And I thought, I know, I liked this one. Um, I'm mm-hmm. surprised at how many of these books I like, considering I mm-hmm. typically do not like oh, or read yeah. YA. So, oh, well, maybe uh, you should read more YA. I'm, exactly. <laughs> I'm reading another one right now. So there I'm like, yay. Uh, grilling. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so we're now is the time I'm going to reveal our next book. Ba-da-da-da. Next book. Next book. <laughs> <laughs> F this one. <laughs> Done. We know you, Devin. You're a murderer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she got away with it. I yes, know. she did. Oh, my gosh. Right, I didn't even thing, mention that. Yeah. Another thing was, like, I would like to see if she actually sticks that freaking landing. Yeah. That's yes. one thing. Like, <laughs> stick this landing. I, I, feel, right. I think she did it. Yeah. I think she landed it. Yeah. So this one is going to be kind of another dark, gritty one. It is called Cut by Patricia mm-hmm. McCormick. Bright red. Yes. So, <laughs> woo. Ooh. so I'm reading the back. Third <laughs> sentence, three words. Can I give it away? Yes. Right. Callie cuts herself. Never too deep, never enough to die, but enough to feel the pain. I'll leave that. Damn. All right. That is what this one is about. Um, I'm in so hard. It's, it is a short book. It's only about it's only 151 pages, uh, so it's it's going to be another quick read, which you know nothing wrong with that. Um, what I have read, the author did about a year and a half worth of research on cutting and the mm-hmm. mental like mentality behind it and things like that. Um, so this one is going to be a little bit more dark and gritty as well. Mm-hmm. So if you are interested in reading along, research it first, please. Um, I take no responsibility for other people's trigger warnings. That's on the individual who would like to read the book. Um, so you know yourself better than I do. <laughs> so, yes. uh, yeah. Caution. Yes. Be delicate with yourself. Mm-hmm. Time. Maybe save it for the summer. <laughs> yep. Wait until next year. Yep. <laughs> it's getting dark, you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's getting it's dark up equinox. in here. Equinox. Happy yeah. equinox. Oh uh, yes. First day of fall. Yeah. Oh, fall. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Oh, it's finally. actually kind of fall like today. It's gonna be like yes. It was nice and cool today. It's gonna be ninety again oh. next week. <laughs> Fat girls don't like to sweat. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> our, our weather is crazy. So. Fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, well, thank yes. you both for being here again. Yes. And we'll Love see you here. all yes. next quarter on our green couch. In 2020. It's all, it's all pet the couch. I pet the couch. Mm. That's me. Oh, I'm kidding. That was that That was You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott. Again, thank huge, huge thank you for Ashley and Alana coming back again today. They had some great things to talk about. Um, Very insightful ladies and always a pleasure to get to hang out with them. Um, So the next book, like I said, is Cut by Patricia McCormick. This one is going to be another one that's a bit dark and gritty. So um, it, it is dealing with... Um, self-harm. So again, another trigger warning for this quarter. Uh, and that's going to start October 1st. So let's all read together and, uh, you know, enjoy it and then have a great discussion afterwards. Uh, if you have any thoughts on You Will Know Me, go ahead and leave some comments down below. Let us know what you thought. Did you agree with us? Did you disagree with us? Did you like Devin? Was she a character that you really enjoyed or did you not like her? Um, and why? So don't forget to head over to iabdpresents.com and also go to patreon.com slash iabd because we have completely overhauled our Patreon site and we worked really hard on it um, and it's it's much more streamlined for you and hopefully you will enjoy some of the awesome rewards we have for you. So go to patreon.com slash iabd, see what those rewards are, sign up for a tier that's comfortable for you and we cannot wait to see you there. Until next time, Quarter 4, I'm Sam. This is the Quarterly Book Club. See you later.